Hello and welcome to the Record Club, brought to you by Record Store Day, the official chart and national album day and now proudly in association with Bowers and Wilkins. My name is Jess Izzat. Thank you very much for joining us. We are super excited to say that our guests this evening are McFly, talking all about their brand new album, Young Dumb Thrills. If you're new to the Record Club, we're going to be spending the next half an hour talking to Danny and Harry from McFly all about their brand new record, and then we'll be putting your questions to them about the album for them to answer. So... If there is anything you'd like to know about the brand new record, whether it be about a certain song, the artwork, or a particular lyric that you enjoyed, drop us a question in the comments section below, and we'll be asking a selection of them to uh, to Danny and Harry in the second half of our chat. On top of that, one lucky person will win, um, will be selected, randomly selected. Anyone who gets their questions answered from that pool of people, they may win a Bowers and Wilkins PX7 over ear noise cancelling headphones, which I'm donning now. And honestly, you'll never want to listen to anything else again. They're amazing. So if you haven't already got a physical copy of the record, I want to remind you your local record stores are still open during lockdown. Each store is providing a special click and collect email, phone and online mailing services. Both Official Charts and Record Store Day UK has store finders on their websites where you can find out exactly what services your local record store is carrying out. So make sure to check online before you get yourself a physical copy of Young Dumb Thrills. It is time. Let's get straight into this week's Record Club and say a huge hello to Danny and Harry from McFly. Hello. Hey, How guys. Are How are you? Good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm not too bad. I'm not too bad. I'm actually very intrigued. Like, your setup, I know that you are in the basically the new McFly household, aren't you, essentially? Yeah, McFly uh, HQ. Total access, Harry. Sorry, McFly Total Access. MTA for short. I feel like I've done MTA, yeah. Um, literally, we've done like a little bit of a, almost a mini tour so far. So you've got like your bandstand behind, but just before we were in like a, a live streaming, podcasting situation. Um, what else have you got going on there? Well, we're in the process of building uh, the studio, which is taking some time. So we've got... The actual recording studio here, uh, a live room, which is also going to be obviously a rehearsal room for when we have shows and stuff. And then um, there's all our equipment is stored here. So it's literally, uh, it's got everything we need. So there's the, the, the uh, opportunities are limitless. As you can see behind Harry's drum kit. Nice. And, uh, and do you have a beanbag room? That's the, that's the big question, I feel. <laughs> Not yet, but we got these like, awesome chairs that are like wheelie chairs yeah Dougie got have, these in and they're really comfy have you have you raced them around yet I feel like you need <laughs> massage chairs as well yeah listen we 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 this is our third day since we've had the keys or something yeah. so yeah we are we're sorting out our setup it's very early days but it's and whereabouts be... is it mm. oh UK it's... based okay <laughs> UK based nice I like it it's in London Okay, yeah. So, um, so it's in the where me and Danny live, so it's very convenient for us. <laughs> Not so much the others, but no. I feel like that's all right. Um, I also want to know, on a scale of one to ten, how likely it is that you might change the name of the tour to um, Spicy Eyes. Yes. Well, it, it was it was out of Spicy Eyes and Eat the Nacho tour. Yeah. <laughs> These are things that fans, I love these things that fans pick up on and then they like properly run with them. So do you know that Dougie actually wanted to call the song Spicy Eyes? It's a song called Head Up. Um, but yeah, it's cool they picked up on, picked up on it. I think Spicy Eyes in the Urban Diction now references us, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. I feel like that was shared after, after the listening party. Um, but guys, 10 years is such a long time to make people wait. I mean... You guys have probably changed in all sorts of ways. And I feel like the documentary, which went out on Saturday night, um, definitely touched on that. But but how is it? How is it having new music in the world, like, finally? It's amazing. It's like, you can't... When when this band has got momentum, it's the best thing. Because, you know, we, we didn't think that we'd ever... Well, I knew. I knew deep down. When we had our hiatus, I knew, I knew deep down that we would be doing something again one day but I didn't know what that was whether that was 
you know, just gigs again and doing greatest hits for the rest of our lives. Which is was not what we wanted to do. Not interested in that. I feel like that's well, definitely resigning to be being. Oh, oh, we're an older band now. If you start yeah, doing that, there's no desire for that. And you know, whatsoever. we've still got a lot of growing to do. We're only young men, so um, the thing is, it's, it has been ten years. But in 2011, like we wrote like a chunk of songs with a view to like recording them in 2012. But then we went on tour in 2012. Then we wrote a load of new songs then, which we then recorded in 2013. And made an album, but then McBusted happened, so we shelved the album. Then we I loved tour. that, by the way, McBusted. Then, just... <laughs> then we went on tour with McBusted for like two and a half years, and we made a McBusted album. Um, so we had actually like been writing and recording. It's not like this album, Young Dung Thrills, has been ten years in the making. Like we actually wrote and recorded most of it in two months at the beginning of this year. But so, and, and we released a load of songs last year called the lost songs we didn't like promote them much but we just basically gave a load of songs to fans uh to give context to the past 10 years um it's almost like we filled in the gaps with the uh the lost songs and the documentary that we did it kind of filled in all the gaps so like yeah. there's nothing to be you know updated with now it's like there we go and now now we're here and now we're doing the mcfly total access and we got a new album out and you know, we're trying to um, adapt with the times as well. Yeah, it's almost like you've kind of caught up with yourselves and you've kind of like, it's like you've got all that overdue stuff out yeah, the way. Yeah, you forget when, when we know everything that's going on in the background, but sometimes you forget to tell it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I do actually want to know when it comes to lyrical content. So uh, for this album, it's overwhelmingly, I feel, positive, which is so great for the times. But um what was what was the decision making in not reflecting some of the 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 harder stuff that you went through uh, that you kind of put to us in your in your documentary? I don't think we were to be honest. We were talking about this literally an hour ago. Sat here talking about it, and I, I don't think we were ready yet. Like we hadn't properly addressed things. Like we were we were back, and it was and as you say, it was a really positive time and. I think we wanted to move on from some of the stuff we've been through over the past couple of years. And yeah, I don't think we were ready. Uh, just like people weren't ready to, we weren't ready to tell our story. And it wasn't until last month that we recorded that documentary and we all felt comfortable telling our fans and telling, willing to put that on like an ITV primetime show, telling our story. So I think, you know, we were just saying about our next album, how we, we would love to kind of explore maybe a slightly darker element of, you know, friendship and, and, and feelings. I mean, there are a couple of songs on there, though. I mean, it's kind of masked by the production being up-tempo, but, like, growing up and head up there, you know, Dougie's dipping his toe into his world there, you know, of what, you know, he's been through. Yeah, um, Sink or Sing as well, like, Sink or Sing is a song. Yeah. Tom wrote the lyrics to that and that kind of... But you just got to... I feel like we've done it gradually. I think we'll be a, probably be a bit braver to do that the next album now that we've kind of said it in the documentary as well. It feels like if we'd have just come out with that, it, it's, there's nothing worse than liking a song but not knowing what it's about. And I think now they know us and where it comes from and why we write these songs or it feels like we've got more of a license to do that now, you know, write about it. It feels like the album's like a celebration of you guys coming back. So, yeah, yeah that's, that's how I feel about it. Yeah, instead of coming out going, what have we been through? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's hard not to be positive when you, when we were having such a good time in the studio like you know the last song on the album is called Not The End and that is just the most positive song but it's such a feel good song and that's when you know that really sums up I guess how we feel as four when we're kind of together and feeling happy but yeah I definitely like exploring the, the darker more emotional elements of, of our music I feel like it's not the end is going to be used as um, people's wedding songs all over next year. Yeah, it's like the wedding song where like everyone's drunk at the end and you're like you don't want yeah. to finish. You know, one of my favourite producers and it was a, bit, a big inspiration for producing this album. But uh, it's Jack Antonoff in the Bleachers, and what I love about him is he he finds himself in like he can only write about himself, which is like hard stuff to write about, but he masks it with this like up feet like. Um, kind of a really uh, up-tempo, good-feeling production. And, he, and then the contrast of that, like, that's what I love about his music and the bleachers. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll probably try and do more of that on the next one, if they are dark subjects. 
we might try and mask it with kind of the fun production, you know. I know what you mean, actually. We um, So in my house, we just had... Uh, like the YouTube videos on and um, I think it's an MGMT song and I can't oh god it's gone from my brain now I don't know why I've said it but um, it's basically about shooting kids or something and I was like oh my god I've been singing the lyrics to that like it's some happy song but I know what you mean yeah um, where you can kind of have a darker meaning to the song but you still want it to to feel and sound up tempo and you only only when you peer a bit closer that you kind of realize what it's about what it's about yeah and the song's kind of like fans make their own stories up to what the lyrics mean anyways you know so it's that's another element i love about releasing music and yeah and tonight is the night is actually like that that's that explores like you know a bit of like personal torment and mental health but it's actually quite a feel-good melody and like production is quite sort yeah. of uplifting as well so yeah that's like yeah that's tom being really exposed isn't it and it's a, it's, a, it's kind of the first single we've had with a with a bit of a message, <laughs> a bit of like you know, yeah. Well, it's are you allowed to share his message or what do you? Well, I think he just was like he had some lyrics originally, and our our producer was just like uh, they're a bit generic, you know, um, and sort of so it took a while to get them, and and then he kind of. And it was getting the chorus lyrics because, you know, the melody, the phrasing of it is quite like limiting in terms of lyrics. And if you got them just a bit wrong, it would sound too corny. Um, and I can't remember what they originally were, but, you know, so once you've got that and then there was a few ideas floating around for the verse that just felt like, oh, that's really interesting. I like Let's that. go down that. Yeah, yeah, let's go down that route. And then, you know, the exposed line where he comes back in onto the, the third chorus you know, we're talking about, you know, I had to admit to myself and my own mental health that I'm asking for help, you know, and that's something that all four of us have been through. Um, so, so it's hard to talk about it, never like not, you know, write about it. Sometimes people find that easier, but for some reason in our band, it's, all, it's almost, it's harder to write about those subjects because you come and see us for, you know, escapism sometimes. And it's kind of like, it's brave. You've got to be really brave and you've got to go for it. If you're going to write a song of that, you know, with the, with lyrics that are close to you and from a place that's like dark or hurt or whatever it is, or, you know, uh, mental health, you've got to be brave and you've got to go for it, you know. Definitely. Um, and you mentioned uh, fan theories about some of your songs. Have there been any sort of strange or funny or standout ones? I haven't really seen enough of... Young Dumb Thrills theories, yeah, but um, I'm trying to think of like ones in the past. <laughs> Some of the lyrics they get wrong are funny. Some of the lyrics you get wrong. Some of the lyrics I get wrong are funny <laughs> as well. <laughs> there was a time once where um, there was a time when <laughs> there was a time once um, there was a time once <laughs> when uh, the fan was singing along to me and she was like. There's been two two instances where I've read the banner and started singing what it says on the banner. <laughs> and then there was another time when there was a fan and we were singing together like this and she sang the wrong lyrics and I sang what she sang. <laughs> <laughs> that is good. That is good to know. Although I don't feel like you should have told like all of this long because they're going to start doing it to you now and making up <laughs> their own lyrics. Um, yeah, talk to me about the title of Young Dumb Thrills and why why you picked that tune as the title track as well. Well, we often do this where it's like above the noise. I remember we were just sat in the car and we were thinking, what are we going to call this album? And then it was, it's a lyric from Sh uh, Shine a Light. And I remember just being like, oh, above the noise, that's okay. Above the noise? And I was like, yeah, that's good. And with this one, it was like that. Dougie just sort of was like, mm, what about Young Dumb Thrills? And initially I wasn't convinced and neither was Tom. I think Danny liked it. And I kind of gave my reasons why I didn't like it. And then Dougie gave a long reason back to why he liked it. And it was one of them where I was, I, he just put across a really good, uh, arg not argument, but good point, and made me see it from a different angle to see it from the way he was seeing it. And I was like, oh, that actually really makes sense. And yeah, it, um, that was that. I was like, actually, yeah, I agree. It's like the artwork. It kind of sums us up as a band. and it's It's colourful, but... Is it an angry care bear? 
Yeah, I mind getting that right. Of, he's got a bit of like, it's not a about, I mean, there was an inspiration there, but it's. It reminds us of bear. Lotso from um, Toy Story. Toy Story. The, yeah. That angry, like, that angry bear. <laughs> yeah, but it's like, you know, it's, it's kind of like we take our art seriously, but not ourselves. <laughs> um, also, uh, I wanted to know in the album, I can see lots of people getting involved with their questions and they're really good. So, so we're going to come to them soon. Um, but I was looking at your listening party and there was a part about Tom and swimming and him having an incident to do with swimming. And I kind of wanted to ask you about that. It says um, Tom had an accident with swimming. Did he? What what happened? Do we know? Can any of the can any of the uh, fans answer it for us? But it was you guys who tweeted it. It was one of you who tweeted it saying oh, last night. Oh, the accident. Yeah. Was it not? T- oh, I mean, that was probably about. Dougie messing about. <laughs> uh, I was like, this is so I think there's, um, I've been singing about the ocean, but I don't swim. Oh, and no, I think no. a fan was probably because there's a lyric that says, "It's I can sing about the ocean, but I don't swim." And so I think maybe a fan was like, oh, well, do you not swim? And then Dougie probably made up some <laughs> accident. Okay, okay, story yeah. about how he had an accident when he was swimming. Damn, I like actually believed. I thought I, thought I, thought I was going to get like the big <laughs> scoop or something. It's a shame because I'd have liked him to... Uh... Look. See if I can find a tweet for you. Okay, right. I'll tell you who it was. You <laughs> um, okay then. So we've got, yeah, we've got quite a lot of questions from from the fans. Uh, Alex Vasquez on the Record Club says, how different was the recording process for Young Dumb Thrills compared to previous albums? Well, it was very different because it's a long story. This and It's kind of a, a good, it's a good question, but it's a hard one to answer. But I'll try my best to. We normally write songs, demo them, then try and go in the studio and recreate that demo. Whereas we always... Over the years, we've got so good at like producing the stuff ourselves that these demos were like capturing the magic that we can't recreate in the studio. There was just something about it, the mindset we were in, the time and, you know, the place. And it's the gut instinct that you get on those like first, you know, bits of recordings that you get down. So this time we wanted to do that, but in a professional studio so that there was beautiful microphones and a kit and a piano set up and all that. And we did that, basically. We had a really creative... Uh, section where I had my setup at the back. We had the desk with Jason there. We had Rat Boy upstairs putting some more other stuff on. If you wanted to work on another song, and there's kind of this rotation of like creativity, and you could sit upstairs and dim the lights, write lyrics, whatever you wanted, and it was just a really fun creative process, and all captured in the studio. And the reason that happened is because in in the past, Tom and Danny used to just write on acoustics, you know, and do like little acoustic demos and then go into a studio with a producer and then work that way. But as Danny got better, like as a producer himself, he was producing, we would write and produce at the same time. And he'd be making these great like songs, but for some reason we felt like, Oh, it's still just a demo. So yeah, we just, we need to get out of that mindset and produce whilst we write. But as Danny said, in an environment where it's quality and not like bedroom production, you know, yeah, it definitely. It can be great, but we feel as a band like we just want you don't want those limitations. So. Uh, how did you how did you guys get to work with Rat Boy? He's a he's an Essex based artist, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. It's quite an interesting collaboration because he's like he's like the bit more underground, like. But basically, our producer Jason Perry uh, is from Essex, and he met Rat Boy through the. I don't know, I just think it was through the like, Essex music scene, kind of skate scene, and Rap Boy, as we call him, Jordan, he's like, him and Jason started writing, and he, Jason was like, this guy is such a talented writer, he's amazing, creative, you've got to work with him, and Dougie met him first, the summer before, and that's where they wrote um, part of Head Up, and um, Doug was like, oh, we've got to work with this guy, and I was like, yeah, yeah, all in good time, man. Like, we're not there yet. We're not ready yet. Um, and then we did a couple of weeks in the studio. And the vibe was really good. And it, then it kind of felt okay to then say, for Jason to be like, can someone else come into the circle <laughs> of trust? Because it is a, when you bring, when you're like making an album, you bring someone in it. It's a sensitive environment. And you, 
you don't just want people coming in and throwing in ideas. And he was, uh, everyone was in the right frame of mind. He was literally just fit in, same sense of humor, um, really humble as well with his ideas, you know. Um, Pushed us, didn't he? To yeah, try, and like, try different stuff and not be stuck in our ways, you know. And he was just fun to have around, and so it just worked. There was no ego, and there was no like, you know, who's this guy? You know, it was just, <laughs> we, just got, we just got on really well with him, and um, he just took some of our songs and just did stuff. Even if it was just little things, were like, that makes it so much cooler, man. So he just hung around for, ended up staying for longer than planned. And yeah. Yeah, just hid around in your yeah, studio. Had, yeah. There's then, Rat Boy again. Yeah. <laughs> and right. when we, so when we had the song Young Dumb Thrills and it was just like, he just put this kind of verse down and it really worked with him. And I mean, other moments, like the way he had such an impact on like, you know, it was like not the end, but like the verses and not the end, just these little like programming hooks he put in and loads of the songs. And so it was a really nice mixture of Danny, you know, producing some stuff and then passing it to Jordan and then and Jason kind of overseeing the whole process and um, and it just worked. Uh, and with Mark Hoppus, it must have been kind of the opposite, I'm guessing. Or... Yeah, that, he was, that was Dougie's hookup. He, I think, again, yeah. Doug's been, you know, he's become really good friends with Mark and I think he can't quite believe it, but he's... He just like calls him Mark now. He's like, oh, Mark, oh, Mark Hoppers from Blink 182. Oh, yes. Oh, that Mark, yeah. That Mark, okay. Uh, we've not really hung out loads with Mark, but Dougie's, you know, really, really got close to Mark. And it was just nice that, you know, that Dougie reached out and said, look, I think growing up was partly Mark's idea anyway. And they kind of collaborated on it a bit and had the, the seed, didn't they? Yeah, so, to- so Doug. Um said to Mark one day, oh, I want to, like, I'm bored, dude, I'm going to write a song, give me a concept to write about. And Mark said, oh, you know, write about how awesome it is being in a band. And I think we just played the O2 last year, and Dougie, you know, he said he felt like the thing with being in a band is that you don't have to grow up, and that's why he loves it. And so he had that chorus hook. And and then he just sent that to Mark, and then Mark just sent the verse back. And it was just like, oh, that was easy. Because we yeah. just... We all just loved it and we're like, sweet. Um, yeah, that, that was one that was made out of the airwaves. He changed it and Mark actually changed a part of the melody in the chorus as well. Yeah, well, I don't know whether he changed the tempo, I just heard him wrong and, and sang it. No, he it. just, because he, he said to Doug. So like, cool. Yeah, he said to Doug, he's like, I hope you don't mind, but I've just changed the melody in the chorus slightly. <laughs> and it was, it just made it better. It's like, no, Mark, it's fine. Yeah, you do no, you. We weren't going to say no. But <laughs> he did make it better so I remember starting the demo to that and we wanted some like beastie boy break beat <laughs> and we started it and we couldn't find what like what was wrong with it so I asked Dougie to just jump up and down and maybe let's get the jump in tempo so we literally got the perfect <laughs> jump in tempo to jump up and down for that song sick so the experiment literally happened there and then I love it <laughs> yeah. uh, We've got Kyra Smith on McFly's page. She's got involved. She says, if your music could be used as a soundtrack for any film, what would it be? Um, you sink or sing for Titanic. <laughs> um, what, like on the boat or something? Yeah, sink or sing. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Like, that's a difficult one. I feel like uh, Wild and Young is quite a cinematic song. That would be a good song. Growing up, growing up could be like Transformers or Fast and Furious or something. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I think yeah, Wild and Young could be more of like a, a like a romantic kind of, you know. Um, I'm imagining like a horse film or something like yeah, Spirit, like, like where there's young, like some sort of love story involved. Young Keanu Reeves or like a young, you know, that sort of vibe. Um, Mm. Well, if there's any movies being made out there and they want Wild and Young, give us a shout. <laughs> yeah, get involved. Get involved in the comments. <laughs> Declan Drum on Official Charts says, are you both watching Giovanna on I'm a Celeb? Yeah, I've seen clips like um, I watched the first episode. There's only been two, hasn't there? So, yeah, yeah. we are. We're watching three. three. Has there been three? Uh, started Sunday night. 
Yeah, it's good, yeah. <laughs> it's good fun. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Keeping an eye on it. It's uh, it's been busy here, though, haven't we? We have been busy, but it's. I know Tom's been glued. <laughs> yeah, of course. But of course. it's uh, no, it's crazy. Steve. She's not had much to do yet. I mean, she did the abseil thing. She last night. Uh, Vernon was eating some. Uh, Oh, some she's, testicles, he's, yeah. He's, he's pretty, like, I'm pretty sure she's going to be very brave when it comes to doing all the trials. You know, and I quite like watching the ones that are scared. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, is it Jordan? Jordan North being oh sick God. on the he thing. So That's so funny. <laughs> She'll be a good campmate. You know, she's good. She'll be a good kind of... Um, Hawksmoor! Hawksmoor! <laughs> How do you guys think you'd fare in I'm a Celeb? What would be like your hardest thing? I'd be more, I'd be like that Jordan guy. <laughs> like honestly, I'm not as maybe as extreme, but the, the snakes in that box, like that is like, <laughs> that's like my worst. I used night. to have pet snakes. It's the eating ones that I just wouldn't be able to do. Yeah, like, same. I'd rather the, do the eating ones than be in a box of snakes. No, no. I'd okay. Do you know what I found worse? The, Creepy crawlies that get down here and in your undies and stuff. Yeah, yeah. they must get bitten. Yeah. Anyway, nice, Alice Alice Velander on McFly's page says, if you could give yourselves one piece of advice in your first year of success, what would it be? Remember it. <laughs> Is this when you were like 17? Is this in the house, um, yeah. your, your joint house? First year of success? I don't know. We had so much fun. Like you can't. I don't know. What would you say? Don't. Do you know? We do more of the bad stuff. <laughs> yeah, do more of the bad stuff while you're you, young. Whilst you're young, because you don't do it anymore. I don't do it anymore. Because <laughs> we don't do it anymore. Yeah. Excellent advice, to any but young. So, no, but no advice. Not, don't take that advice if you're 17, 18. Work hard and go to university. Oh, go yeah. to uni. That's a bit... Uh, well, not right now, yeah. Yeah, get an apprenticeship. No, the thing is, no, do what you love doing and go for <laughs> it. Go for L it. Lots of things flying around here. Just enjoy what you're doing. Yeah, that's This is it. what we'd have said. We'd have confused ourselves. <laughs> we'd have been like that now in, in, in the first year of the band. Like, what are these guys saying? Yeah. You'd get this, like, voicemail from the future you and they'd be like, okay, I'm very confused. I'm very confused, yeah. I think the thing Take is... Take care of each other. That's what I'd have done more. We of. had fun. But, you know, we were never going to get into too much trouble because we, you know, there was a limit to our rebellions. So <laughs> You sound like you're the, do you, were you the, the responsible one, Harry? No. Who he was the, who he, was he the led, one? He, he was the one that led you down uh, the, the naughty path. Oh, dear. Who was, who would like be first in bed every night? Tom. Tom. And then I'd fall asleep on the sofa like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, uh, I mean, we're obsessed with uh, Project Gotham and FIFA, and then we listened to the U's and Postal Service. Then we got Pizza, and it was just amazing. Like the, the whole, the whole band house was so much fun. Like it was just carnage. Yeah, it's only six. I know it's seven o'clock. We can't really talk about what we got up to. <laughs> Yeah, save that for after Watershed. <laughs> Alex McGregor on the Record Club uh, has a question for Danny. You and Tom have written for One Direction before. Is there anyone else you'd be up for writing with in the future? Uh, yeah, I mean, whoever... If, it's funny, th those things, because you really have to put, like, what you would do for your... Like, me and Tom don't write for anybody else. Un unless we can really put everything we can into it, like, and we feel like we can add or at least help. So when One D asked, obviously they were fans of ours, and we were like, yeah, of course. And you know, the biggest one we did for them was "Don't Forget Where You Belong," wasn't it? And they played it on their tour and stuff, and it was just an anthemic, like, really good arena song. And then we've actually did we do three good or song four? That. Yeah. Three or four. We did some for the American album as well. Was it Invincible? Invincible? No. Uh, Invis yeah. Uh, irresistible. 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 Don't forget where you belong. I would. I want and I would. Yeah, I would and I want. Yeah. But yeah, um, just like giving them, you know, uh, giving giving them a bit of, you've got to really get into it. And, and, and it's hard not to just write willy nilly. So whoever, you know, when the offer comes in, as long as we go, yes, we can do something for you and, and help and it can be amazing, uh, then of course we would write. But, um, 
How would they have to pitch it to you? Would they have to like um, send you a video or like a... Well, yeah, there's nothing worse than bands or artists not knowing what they want and the references are just crazy. Like it's so so much easier when you know and you set yourself rules and you can go for it and then you can take a little risk on the side. But once they know what they want and they know, you can you can always mould it into like, you know, close as close as you can to it because it's always going to take its own journey anyway. It's a very, yeah. um, you know, it's a very, what's the word, like delicate environment when you're writing music. And so some, like, songwriters who do it for a living and they're just, that's what they do, you know. Whereas Tom and Danny, it's more like they've always mainly written for McFly or, you know, any solo stuff they've done. So it, I know Tom finds it much harder as well writing for just new people he's never met. You know, because you don't know how you're going to, you know, like with One Direction, you'd, you'd met them and you knew them a bit and you kind of knew the vibe and stuff. And so, yeah, I remember going to my local Waitrose with Harry Styles <laughs> and we, we got a lot of barbecue stuff. And I was like, mate, no one knows you yet. You're going to be huge. <laughs> oh, that must have been so strange. Like now you probably wouldn't be able to walk anywhere without I being know. clocked. Definitely. Um Shireen Emma, oh sorry, I'm really bad at saying surnames. Emamian on Record Store Day says, uh, "What song from Young Dumb Thrills are you most excited to play on tour?" Um, I'm looking forward to playing uh, Wild and Young, and um, it's quite a job for you on the drums, though, isn't it? It is, mate. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm, I'm looking forward to playing Young Dumb Thrills, the song. But in more of in like a smaller venue. Oh, what yeah. venue? Your own venue? No, and... more like um, you know where it's like just a a kind of pit of two thousand people standing, just kind of jumping up and down. Yeah, Young, young Dumb Thrills. It's got like it's got a chorus that allows the lighting guy to go mad, <laughs> and then like and then like it's like a dance drop, isn't it? It's like, yeah. you know, it's like one of those that everyone needs to bounce to under some crazy light. Well, Wait, is this the one that you did the jumping to? No, that's growing no. up. That's growing oh, up. no, that's, yeah, growing up, isn't it? I, I kind of, you know, I personally feel like the arena sets always need to be approached slightly differently. Like, because we've, this next tour is an arena tour and then no doubt at some point we'll be doing like theatres or, you know, and then back in arenas. And so I think some songs suit different venues better yeah. and you know there's a different demographic of people at different if the gig is like a massive gig then you know there's all well, your hardcore there but then there's other people that are more just like oh let's go see McFly so you kind of got to balance the set as well so we spend a lot of time on our set list a lot of time that's good I like that um do you have a personal favorite on the track on the track list um yeah like i mean wild and young is one of my favorites it's been it's been um it's been on its own little journey well big journey that one because i just i don't know i think it gives it shows a my how do you say this my songs on the album it's not like it's not like my song but mine are always like the not alones and the falling in loves and the mm. quite and it's quite nice to have this up tempo kind of indie pop rock like just going for it and getting everyone together and singing and you know it came it was massively massively influenced by the bleachers vibes and stuff like that and um i remember hearing roll i remember hearing roller coaster for the first time and it you know when you hear music and it just Ronan, like Ronan Keaton, by the way Ronan yeah Keaton. <laughs> no roller coaster by jack antonoff the bleachers <laughs> and you know I can't they, lie, the Ronan Keating one did come to mind then. I was like, oh, oh sorry about that. No, go on, people, <laughs> they need to go and check out Roller Coaster by the Bleachers because it, it, it just changed my life. That, it made my life that little bit better when I first heard it. I was like, oh, my God. You know, it was all my influences in one song. And it was just like, yeah, so I think Wild and Young, uh, I love Not the End because it's like I've changed the way I've sung on that. I tried to be, I basically tried to be like Pharrell Williams on it. <laughs> <laughs> There's a tap in. You know, I feel that, yeah. I like that. Um, I never really sing like that. I'm normally full on, so it's quite nice. Sing or Sing was a challenge to sing as well. Um, and that's a favourite. Uh, what else is a 
Yeah, I think those three are my top three. Nice. Yeah. Flexing your vocals on those. So that's good. Guys, um, that is all we have time for today. Thank you so much. We've loved having you, Danny, Harry, McFly. Um, if you haven't already got yourself a copy of Young Dumb Thrills, we absolutely recommend you order one from your local record shop. A uh, little reminder, your local record stores are still open during lockdown. Each store is providing special click and collect email, phone and online mailing services. Official Charts and Record Store Day UK both have store finders on their websites so you can find out exactly what services your local record store is carrying out. I'm also excited to announce that the winner of this week's Bowers & Wilkins PX7 Wireless Headphones Prize is Kyra Smith on McFly's page so keep your DMs open you're going to get a pair of really sick headphones also yep go get your copy of the album I'm I've been told mine is on the way um so excited to receive that but thank you so much everyone for joining us and sending your questions thank you again Harry and Danny uh join us again Wednesday the 2nd of December 6 30 where our next guest will be revealed on the Record cha Club channels shortly. My name's Jess Izzat. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for having us. Thanks, guys. Bye.